So we've bought ourselves a nice new big battery. Time to get it installed then. Hi, I'm Chris and welcome back to the channel. In a recent video, I outlined our plans for a couple of upgrades we're going to be making to our solar power setup in 2024. The first of these is increasing our battery storage capacity from 7 kilowatt hours to 11.8 kilowatt hours by the addition of a Pylon Tech US 5000 battery module. Let's see how to get it up and running. For the last 18 months, our two existing US 3000C battery modules have just been sat on a piece of plywood on the garage floor. Although I thought I'd prepared pretty well for the initial installation back in July 2022, I hadn't really given much thought to battery storage. So when the electrician was just planning to put them straight onto the floor, the best I could do at the time was just rustle up that piece of plywood. When looking to purchase the US 5000 module, I did give some thought to maybe buying a metal racking system or perhaps constructing something similar in wood. In the end, I just went with a surplus piece of kitchen worktop, suitably trimmed to size with a couple of lengths of 2 before fastened along the underside to spread the load and keep everything off the floor. Although we don't have any immediate plans to buy another battery, there's just enough space to accommodate a second US 5000 if we chose to do that. I didn't bother with any brackets that would allow the US 5000 to be clipped to the existing two modules as I thought the risk of anything getting knocked over was pretty small and I could always use some zip ties if needed. Opening up the box we're presented with a set of positive and negative supply leads, a short CAN cable, earthing cable, operation manual and of course the battery itself. With a weight of around 40 kilos, that's 88 pounds, this is no lightweight and first lifting it out of the box and then onto the newly fashioned plinth was no mean feat. So the first thing I'm going to do, although I don't think it's strictly necessary, but it's interesting, is uh, measure the voltage of the new battery before we connect it up. So I'll switch it on with the rocker switch and then press the SW button and it should start to switch on. Um, I've already got one positive terminal uh, uncovered, so I'll take off the other and cap and up. I'm getting the DVM uh, negative positive. Okay, so that's reading 49.5. Okay, so at this point, I'm going to switch the battery off again. I'm now going to switch the remaining batteries off and then isolate them from the inverter. So uh, I don't think it really matters which order. But we'll probably see an alarm come up shortly because um, it's uh, no can. And now we're going to isolate the battery completely from the system. Right. By gum, as they say, that's a pretty meaty earth cable. So, just to be safe, although it is switched off, I'll just temporarily put those back on just lightly. Go. The electrician who put those on certainly had his Weetabix for his breakfast. You can see that without my head in the way. Just trying to get it lined up a little bit better. That's better. Nip it up. Yep. Root it round. So, yep. Doesn't really matter which side it approaches from, I guess. So, unscrew that screw. Thinking about it, I might see if I can swither it 
round that way and then we can tuck the excess down between the two power supply modules a bit like uh, has been done Okay. So now I'm going to connect up the neg black negative cable from this US 3000C up to the 5000. to move the supply cable or if you like this end of the positive cable up to the 5000. So we're the caps. Perfect. There we go. This positive cable on. Routine, not quite sure. Just move it about. And now bring that up. Let's have a look at the cables afterwards. Just not tie it up for now. That's better. And let's see, I'll tidy up the cables a bit later. Right, so one last check. Earth cable all the way across. Negatives all connected, positives all connected, back down to the supply. So at this point I'm going to um, balance the batteries by switching them on, but not connected to uh, the inverter, so they level themselves out. So I'll switch them all on. We need to press the SW switch on the master battery and of course I haven't moved the CAN cable across so I need to do that. also need to fit the uh, link port cable so from here we go from upper to lower so 0 to 1 so again 0 to 1. Okay, so we should be able to just press that. All the batteries should power up. So we can see here this is a slightly lower charge as you would expect, just come out of the box. These two batteries are fully charged. This one's, what's that, four, four out of six LEDs. So we're going to leave that now for um, about half an hour. Okay, well I've had the batteries uh, connected up in parallel for about 40 to 45 minutes uh, not connected to the inverter. And just reading the manual, always a good idea. During capacity expansion or replacement when paralleling different states of charge voltage modules together it is recommended to maintain the system in idle for greater than or equal to 15 minutes or until the state of charge LEDs become similar, i.e. less than one dot difference before normal operation. So we're still two dots different, still a reasonable amount of charge this one needs to take up, but they've been in parallel now for, as I say, nearly 45 minutes, so I think that's uh, good enough to uh, let them assimilate, if you like. So what I'm going to do is switch them off Put the isolator back in, start them up again, and hopefully we'll have our third battery up and running. So let's switch them off. Put the isolator back in. Switch them back on. Just check them. 
press the start button. With all three battery modules now installed, the system is displaying an overall state of charge of 79%. That's roughly what you'd expect given the two original US 3000C modules were around 95% and the new US 5000 about 65-70%. to If we take a look at the BMS information screen, we can see both the charge and discharge limits have been updated to 154 amps. That figure is made up from 37 amps each for the two US 3000Cs and 80 amps for the US 5000, indicating the system has correctly identified the new module. So that's it, all done apart from a little bit of tidying up of the cables. All in all, a pretty straightforward process then, apart of course from the 40 kilo battery lift and the earthing cable screws being so tight you needed a month's supply of Weetabix before tackling them. Seriously though, I think you'd agree, not worth paying to have somebody do it for me. Well that's it for this one, thanks for watching, please do like, comment and subscribe if you haven't already done so. Cheers and hope to see you again next time.